There's really no way of restoring the river if the dams stay in. Oh, fish on. Thank you, fish. We are a fishing family. That's what we do, and that's what we've always done. Say thank you to the fish for giving its life for us. The family's tenure here starts at the time of creation. As far back as anyone can remember, the ancestors have been at the house of Leu, at the mouth of the river. In Yurok worldview, our obligation was to live in a balance with the natural world and to steward it. My dad had four girls and one boy, and all of us kids learned to fish. This river historically was the third largest salmon producing river in the whole continental U.S. My dad always says, we've fished these same runs of salmon for so many generations that we now carry each other's DNA. In the early 2000s, I thought that I would start a fishing business and market and sell Yurok fish all over the world. And then the fish kill happened. Disaster on the Klamath River. Dead salmon everywhere. Mile after mile of riverbank littered with dead fish. It was the largest fish kill in American history, and it was completely man-made. Essentially, federal government diverted a bunch of water to support agriculture at the top of the river. There were over 70,000 adult salmon dead in the water. I was home that summer working for tribal fisheries as a fish technician. I remember being in the boat and observing all the dead fish and thinking that is not a natural event. Nothing like that in Yurok's history has ever happened. And then the second thing I thought was, I have to go to law school to prevent this kind of thing from ever happening again. To see that true ecological collapse launched a whole new generation into the fight. these fish represent is a travesty of federal policy. It is not okay to sacrifice the species that our people depend on. I love you. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit. Mwah. Oh, look at I got my lips on you. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome our new returning members to the first subcommittee hearing of the 118th Congress. I will now introduce our witnesses. Ms. Amy Cordalis, legal counsel for the Yurok tribe and co-principal of the Ridges to Riffles Indigenous Conservation Group. There are a few better examples of the challenges associated with multi-use water resources than my home waters, the Klamath Basin in Southern Oregon and Northern California. The Klamath supports tribal nations, a federal irrigation project, a wildlife refuge, a hydroelectric project, recreation and commercial and offshore fisheries. 
but the basin is in ecological, cultural, and economic crisis. Nice. There we go. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, there's something in there. Oh! Whoa! Did it come out? All right, there he goes. Here. After the fish kill happened, dam removal became the only option for Yurok because we could not allow our river to be that sick ever again. Like, we just, we just couldn't. We are a few days from fishing being completely closed because this year's returning salmon run is the second lowest on record. The Klamath has been in extreme drought. Things are just getting warmer. And then you couple that with all of the bad conditions that the dams create, and it's essentially like the perfect storm. There's really no way of restoring the river if the dams stay in. I spend so much time in places where people with important government titles and um, money make really bad choices about how they manage this river. The river's sick and the salmon are sick, but at the same time, they're still here and so are we. Hi, my love. Oh, you so wet. I know, because I was catching fish. What's up, dudes? Oh, I like, oh, thank you. Generations of my family have fought to stay on Yurok land. We've fought for Yurok fishing rights. We've fought to incorporate those core principles of balance with the natural world into a post-colonized world. through genocide, through assimilation. Each generation has taken its turn. The Yurok Reservation was created by executive order in 1855. And what that meant was that we have federally reserved aboriginal fishing rights, hunting rights, and water rights. But there was a long time where the state of California prosecuted us for just fishing in our traditional fishing holes. And so there was this period where the family was essentially salmon bootleggers. In 1969, my great uncle Raymond Matz was arrested by the state for fishing. And he had been arrested before, but he kind of just got sick of it. As a part of the civil rights movement, a lawyer in Berkeley agreed to take Uncle Ray's case. That case made it all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court held that, no, it was still Indian country. Aboriginal fishing rights are rights based in federal law. The family won, like we won. But that wasn't the end of it. All right, you start with the gills. Why is it so? And you go all the way through. In the summer of 78, the federal government put a complete moratorium on all Yurok fishing on the river. They sent in federal marshals with full riot gear, raiding houses in the middle of the night without warrants, abuse and beatings down on the water. And once again, the Yurok people went to war with the US and kept fishing. So we won again. That's largely why we as Yurok people are able in modern times to continue our fishing way of life. Today is really just to dive into what the work plan is, how I've been thinking about all of this. It's essentially like we are getting ready for the Super Bowl. 
So you get one shot, so everything has to be right. It's really an exciting time to be a tribal lawyer because all of those fishing and water rights are the supreme law of the land. The people in my generation realize our fight is for the preservation of the fish and the river. And a lot of us have dedicated our adult lives to continuing that historical fight. Our next speaker is Amy Cordalis. My talk today is really about healing. We can't keep using the same ways of thinking, the same management practices, and expect a different outcome. Dam removal, it's not a test. It will work, it will heal, because the water remembers where to go. It remembers where it's been. It remembers what it felt like to thrive. As humans, we remember too. We have in our ancestral blood that knowledge of what it was like to live on a healthy planet. We are voting on Order H1, which is a rather momentous decision to approve the license surrender and removal of four dams along the Klamath River in Oregon and California. The order is a culmination of years of work on the parts of the project's licensee, Pacificor, on the parts of Oregon and California, on the parts of several state and local agencies, federal agencies, and importantly, on the parts of several tribes. Okay, all right, here we go. The vote begins with Commissioner Phillips. I vote aye. Commissioner Christie. Aye. Commissioner Clements. I vote aye. Commissioner Danley. I vote aye. And Chairman Glick. I vote aye. Hey, Amy. Hey. So they approved it. They're taking out the dams. <laughs> <laughs> wow, huh? I know. Oh I can't even believe it. I'm totally in shock. You're so, in shock. Well, here we go. Hey, no. Hey, no. Hey, no. Hey, no. Great creator, ancestors, we pray for this next generation of river warriors who will guide us into the future. We have been through so much and we struggle. You know, we still don't have fish in our freezers. Some of us don't have running water or electricity in our homes. We, in our Indian rights and in that inherent sovereignty and our ability to be on this river and to fish, have some of the most important rights that our ancestors preserved that Uncle Ray's case confirmed, and that we get the great privilege of living every single day. We're on the eve of historic change, where instead of gathering to fight how Uncle Ray did, how so many of you all did, we can gather to celebrate dam removal. As we speak, those dams are coming down. So, in the... <laughs> In the great words of Uncle Ray, fish on. What was key to making this work is indigenous-led conservation. That's what this is. That's how we got across the finish line. On hold. There were so many times the whole project could have failed. 
how we got through that was working as a coalition. I chose law, but other people chose biology, tribal leadership, community activism. You had the tribes, you had business, you had the states. The tribal rights were key, and for a long time, they were ignored. What it represents is the beginning of a new era. All of the work of my ancestors, all of the prayers and the medicine that all the indigenous peoples of the river had laid down got us to this point where we on our river are engaging in the largest dam removal project in history. Yeah. 